Hello everyone and welcome to our Facebook Live. Um, today we're talking about career FOMO. Uh, if you're worried maybe that you aren't going to get your dream job or maybe you don't know what your dream job is yet or you're still maybe trying to figure out how you can connect what you're studying to what a future career might look like, we're here to help go over some of the resources that can help you answer those questions. And at downtown, at U of T, we have loads of resources and events and services that can do that for you. Loads of things that you can go over um, and to help build your future in our changing world. So my name is Carrie Proctor and I coordinate career exploration programs here on the downtown campus at U of T. And my name is Joe Sam Buchanan. I'm going into my third year of undergraduate studies at the University of Toronto, and I'm a career FOMO ambassador. That simply means that I take fear and I transform it into future goals. Mm -hmm. I create multimedia projects that inspire students with positive messages, and I'm a big fan of personal growth. So I'm really happy to be here with you today to work with Carrie so that we can give you some tips that will not only set you up for success, but will help you to maintain it all year long. Awesome. Yeah. And so before we launch into it, we'd like to tell you a little bit about ourselves and about our own career story. And so that can maybe get you thinking about your own career story. So I studied here um, at U of T. I was a Victoria University student in arts and science. I studied humanities um, and I, I loved it. Like I loved every second of it. But when I was getting later on in my degree, in my undergrad, I started to get that fear of like, I don't know. I don't know what my future career is going to look like and what this degree is going to lead me towards. And all of that kind of ambiguity kind of came crashing in for me. Um, but upon reflection, at the same time as I was studying academically, I had started to do on-campus work and on-campus work placements in student life. So I would started doing presentations and facilitating workshops for students. And I realized like this is something that I really love. And so I thought maybe that could be something that would be a meaningful career for me. Um, but even with that, it took me five months to land a contract after I graduated. And that, like, it takes a toll, right? But I spent those five months um, networking, talking to people, learning about different divisions in the university, um, doing my research, right, and exploring my career options. And that went great. And then um, a year and a half after I graduated and three contracts later, I finally was able to land my full-time job working at Chestnut Residence. That was my first big job at U of T. Um, and it was doing exactly what I wanted to be doing or similar to what I want to be doing of supporting students, talking to students, problem solving, creating great programs for learning. It was fantastic. And then seven months ago, I came here to career exploration and education where I can have conversations like this, right? And helping students learn about what their future career paths might hold, looking at all the different resources and helping students to answer those big questions that I also faced and I think that we all face regularly, right? Um, so yeah, that's my career journey. Um, happy to talk more, but Josan, what about you? Absolutely, I was one of those students with those big career questions. Um, I'm in my third year, as I said before. About one year and one month ago, I was just finishing up my first year of university. I had applied for it and I got a job at the Career Exploration and Education Center, where we're sitting right now, and I was working as a project coordinator on a multimedia project. But at about the same time, um, program enrollment started, so I had to choose my program. I chose to be a psychology student, so I did a psychology specialist and visual studies minor degree. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be an art therapist that was my goal since grade eight. But as soon as I enrolled in those programs, I started to have doubts about what mm -hmm. I wanted from my future. And I was like, really life, really? Uh, I've done all of this planning, um, four years of high school, and now I'm here and I'm changing my mind. So after a few weeks of freaking out, I took an afternoon, I sat myself down at a table at my grandma's house. I pulled out some markers and I decided to doodle. And I created a mind map with everything that I wanted from my life. What um, my income, my desired income was, um, where I wanted to work, the impact I wanted to have. And what I found out is that all of my career goals revolved around children's media. I wanted to create meaningful shows and programs and games for children. 
So immediately after that, like literally an hour after making that plan, um, I just jumped on the internet. I started to do research about people in my field who were making a big difference. I subscribed to a bunch of newsletters, joined mm. Facebook groups, read articles, and I even found an internship in Toronto with people who were doing exactly what I wanted to do. How crazy is that? That's awesome. That's pretty awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got. I like to say I got lucky, um, but honestly, I don't think there are any coincidences. Mm. So from that moment, I just went gung-ho on planning that entire summer was just spent planning because I was determined to get into that internship um, it was a little bit too late for me to change the courses that I had already worked so hard to plan if you're in the midst of planning your courses right now mm -hmm. you know that it can be difficult to line everything up so instead my plan was to use each of my assignments to um, do something that would teach me more about children's media so I could get into the internship later. So the year came, I just planned, I carried out my plan while continuing my career exploration and education job and being a part of different clubs and getting support from my family members, which is very important. Give yourself some support. Mm -hmm. um, and my plan worked. So this summer, I am in my third month of my internship at Ryerson University where I'm working on a children's game. I'm also working on a research project about children's media, and um, I'm still in touch with the Career Exploration and Education Center. I loved my work-study um, journey, which we'll tell you about a bit later, mm -hmm. and that's a bit about me. That's great. That's yeah. really cool. I didn't know all that. That's yeah. awesome. Thanks, Carrie. Um, okay, so each of us have a unique career story. Um, you know a little bit about ours, and maybe you're still in the process of creating yours and building yours. Maybe you're midway through, maybe you're just starting, um, but we can give you some of the resources that can help you shape that future and shape that story. Um, we spend a lot of time talking about three big questions at career exploration and education. Uh, those are, what can I do with my degree? Uh, how do I get a job and what about grad school? Our job is to support students and recent alumni to start answering these questions for, for you to start um, exploring the options that can, can shape what those answers might be. Um, we'd like to help you to uh, figure out a way to use your academic studies and your time at U of T to leverage into a meaningful career in, in a way that contributes to the world. Um, one of the major ways we do this though is through career exploration. Um, we've got a ton of really great programs and services that can help you start exploring what's out there, the different um, industries, the different job titles, all sorts of different things, the different um, graduate programs that might help you. It's hard to know what you want to do, right, if you don't know what is out there. Mm -hmm. So we can help you start thinking about that. Um, to start, maybe, Josanne, can you tell us a bit about Career Start? Of course, I'd love to. So as Carrie mentioned, UFT has a bunch of amazing resources that exist just to help you to begin or continue your career planning journey. Um, but as a student who is just starting out or someone who's maybe changed your plans just like I did, it can be hard to determine exactly where to start. Mm. So Career Start is a good place to begin. Um, it involves a 20-minute appointment with a peer advisor who is going to help you to create an individualized career learning plan. Um, so basically, at the beginning of these meetings, the career or the peer advisor and you will go through and just discuss your career goals, um, establish what your current, J your current stage of job searching is, um, and then establish a specific career-related question that you'd like to answer. And then the peer advisor will work with you to find some uh, C, et cetera, career exploration and education programs that could help you, some employer programs that you could attend, or even some workshops that might help you out. Um, you can even have an opportunity to fix your resume up or fix your LinkedIn profile or just tune it up a little bit so that it's as best as it can be. What's important about this is that every University of Toronto student and recent graduate has access to these amazing programs. Mm -hmm. If you want to book one of these sessions, you can head on into the Student Success Center between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. from Monday to Friday. You can call 416-978-8000. That's all in the comments and links. Yes, that's yeah. all in the comments and in the links if you're wondering. And then we also have a nice website that you can visit which will also be posted. It's www.studentlife.utoronto.ca slash cc slash chat great yeah so Josanne, you mentioned career exploration programs um, which is specifically where I work and specifically what I love about the services we offer um, so career exploration 
basically it provides opportunities for you to do just that. Look at the different options that are out there, learn about the different jobs, the different positions. Um, we specifically work to connect students to practicing career professionals in the community. Many of them are U of T alumni. Um, we have two major programs that we run. So one is the Job Shadow program and one is in the field. They're um, similar but distinctly different. So Job Shadow provides a more in-depth learning opportunity. We um, match students with t one to eight students with professionals in the community. So you can get some very specific one-on-one -on -one time with people doing the exact kind of jobs that you might be interested in. Um, they're short-term placement opportunities and our participating professionals are across the board. We have people from all different types of professions. We have lawyers, we have psychologists, we have an art therapist, um, we have a city planner. Um, so all sorts of really interesting people doing really interesting work here in Toronto. Um, and among many others too, we, our roster of hosts of professionals change all the time. So um, it's a really great opportunity to check out. Um, the placements are short term, they're a half day or two days, sometimes as long as five days, but they're not meant to interrupt your academic studies. Um, and during that time you get to tour a workplace, you get to talk to professionals at different stages in their career, and you get to do kind of a hands-on learning opportunity to think about whether this is a profession that might be actually interesting to you, that, that you might get a lot of joy in pursuing and doing. And that's the point of this program too, is for you to think about, I've always wanted to be a lawyer, maybe I should talk to a lawyer and see if that's something that I want to really actively pursue. We're trying to have, help you to have those conversations with people in the community. Um, we run Job Shadow three times a year, and it's open for first-year students, right up to postdocs, fellows, and recent graduates. All sorts of students can participate, and recent graduates can participate. Um, and then we have in the field, which is similar, so it's more like a field trip. So we can bring up to 20 to 30 students to an organization where you'll learn about workplace culture and talk to professionals, get a workplace tour and see a real workplace. Um, again, it's a really fantastic learning opportunity just to see an organization, just to get in there. We um, Last year we went to a couple different places, but uh, Deloitte, Google Waterloo, and uh, the City of Toronto, to name a few, and we're going to keep doing these programs. Um, next year we're going to have probably one a month, uh, so there's going to be a great learning opportunity as well, and it's a great way to network and meet, meet people. Um, great programs. Uh, to participate in either of them, you'll need to participate in a career exploration orientation workshop. So those are going to be offered in September. Um, and registration, you'll be able to register for them later, probably early September. Um, so keep an eye out. They'll be on the CLNX events and workshops calendar. And you'll just go in through your CLNX account, click on the workshop, and you can just register that way. And I do them. So you can come if you uh, go to those as a result of this video. Definitely say hi to me because that would be awesome to know and I'd love to chat. And they'll be in our Facebook event, so we'll look out for orientation in our Facebook events. Awesome. Yeah. Did that get picked up? I think so. You I think so? It maybe. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so look out also for the Facebook event um, for career exploration orientations. We're going to have all the dates listed on Facebook just as a reminder so you can see that and then go directly to CLNX and register that way. Um, they're great workshops. I'll be there. Um, yeah. Let's see. They're all about placement, so Josanne, why don't you tell us a little bit about your work study placement? Yeah, absolutely. So, as I mentioned before, I was a project coordinator of a project called FOMO, Fear, of, well, it's actually Future of My Own. We took FOMO and we redefined it to empower students. So one of the cool things I got to do during my work study placement was to interview professionals to learn all about the things that they did, uh, what they were like as students, which is a perspective that you don't always get, especially mm -hmm. just with your traditional networking sessions. So I learned three things, and I think it's important, um, since you might not have gotten a chance to look at the project, to just share these three learnings with you, okay? So the first is that failure is normal, but even more than that, failure is fundamental to growth and success. I mentioned mm -hmm. that I'm a big uh, follower of the personal growth movement. Yeah. Um, so all of the professionals that I met had experiences of failure, whether it was in university, in their personal life, um, at work, but all of them reflected on their failures. They made changes and they became stronger as a result of those failures. So that was really inspiring for me. And for those of you watching at home, um, I'd like to maybe just share a brief personal story about a failure of my own. 
So last semester, I nearly failed a statistics test, and mm. I was just shocked. I was stunned. Um, failing certainly didn't meld with my picture of the high achieving student that I wanted to be. So I went through a bit of a crisis. Uh, you know, forget building resilience. I just felt terrible. But I was still alive, so eventually I had to pick myself up. I had to confront my feelings, shake it off, and move on so that I could move towards my academic goals. And from my experience, I learned how to study well under pressure, how to empathize with my peers who had come face to face with failure, which is a hard thing to do. And I also learned how to take care of myself even under pressure. Mm -hmm. So I feel like learning about all of the stories that I did through my work study experience helped to bring those lessons to life for me so that when I ended up facing them on my own, I was prepared. I said, oh, for example, um, L.A. Wade, who is one of our alumni, um, went through this experience and now I'm going through it so I kind of know what to expect and I know that life won't end for me if I get um, this mark on a test and it really helped me. Mm -hmm. Something else that I learned is that there are tons of supportive resources on campus. If you are a first year student or even if you're uh, going up in your university career and you're not necessarily your first year, if you've been online you've seen that U of T has a lot of clubs, a lot of uh, different organizations that help students. Um, but Honestly, it just goes to show that UFT is really devoted to helping all students, no matter where in their academic careers they are. So when I was working on the work study project, um, I met professionals who had used their college registrars to get help. I met uh, professionals who had spoken to their professors, um, whether it was to get an extension or to just understand why they got the mark that they did. And I'm just saying that to you because you shouldn't be afraid to use any of these resources. They're there to help you. And it can seem really daunting, to, especially to go into a professor and to talk to them. Um, but most often they're not, they're more, ha more than happy to help you. Um, and it will only make you a stronger student. Mm -hmm. And then the last thing I want to share with all of you is that I learned that there's no such thing as the normal university experience. Um, I feel like we all come to university with this idea of what uh, we're supposed to be like as students, especially from watching movies and all of that. Uh, many of us come in only to get that perspective shattered a little bit, and it's not a bad thing. In fact, um, knowing that there is no normal university experience should make us proud of the unique and diverse experiences that we bring to the table. I think that all of us have diverse journeys to fulfill, so it makes sense that we all need diverse experiences to survive and to go about thriving in university, right? Mm -hmm. um, so those are three things that I learned, and I really hope that all of you uh, take the opportunity to learn from alumni. Um, learn about all of the career options that are available from you no matter where you are. And a great way to start is to visit the FOMO podcast series. That's the project that I worked on. You can find it by going to hearthouse.ca slash future of my own. Um, I believe the link is going to be posted in case you want to listen to that. It's a great resource. If you're ever feeling stressed during this school year or even now, just tune in, listen to an alum story, and you'll probably find something that inspires you. Mm -hmm. That I would highly recommend checking mm -hmm. that out for sure. Yeah. Um, and talking to professionals, talking to alumni is always a great way to get really incredible insights that will, would be helpful for you. Um, we have a really active alumni community at U of T and there are, that would be more than willing to talk to you and answer your questions. We have two services that are two resources available to you. One is 10,000 Coffees. Mm -hmm. So 10,000 Coffees is this, on, uh, the U of T hub on 10,000 Coffees is this online database, this online network of student staff and U of T alumni and professionals um, that you can connect with directly um, through common interests or maybe you're interested in, in the kind of career that they do, um, and they'd be more than willing to talk to you and have a conversation. Um, we also have Career Navigator. So this is uh, an online database of, uh, database of professionals from different divisions and degrees across U of T. And so you can go on, click on the major that you're currently studying, and see where other people who studied that currently are and the kinds of things that they're doing. Um, and you can reach out to them that way as well. So again, loads of people for you to talk to and learn from at U of T. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So we're running a little bit uh, short on time, but there's just one more thing I want to tell all of you about, and I'm very excited. It relates to the work-study program that I was talking about before. So the work-study program is a great way for students to get practical experience 
doing something and learning about what kind of job they might like to pursue in the future, which is kind of cool. Um, you can go to school and you can work at the same time, so it's a win-win. Uh, U of T has almost 4,000 work-study positions, and they range from any, everything from uh, lab research to working with kids to event planning to program coordination, just as Carrie kind of does in her job. Maybe you'll get to work with her one day. That's true. <laughs> um, and almost 40% of the positions are research-based. Uh, but again, there's just a diverse selection, and all U of T students can participate in work study experiences, which is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they show up all around campus, the research positions, you can work with me, career exploration education, there's loads of different opportunities, and it's a great way just for you to think about um, the types of skills that you want to develop, uh, and develop those alongside of your academic skills. Um, yeah, I did program facilitation or workshop facilitation when I was a student, and that directly shaped the rest of my career, for sure. Um, so it's a great opportunity. So Josanne, you did uh, work study. Do you want to talk about a little bit of um, what you liked about it? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so in my work study position, mm -hmm. I was responsible for not only planning a multimedia project to help students, the FOMO project, mm -hmm. but I was also responsible for carrying out that plan, which meant that I was interviewing professionals from many different fields of study, whether it was um, engineering or something else. Um, I think we even had a literacy major or an English major oh, cool. in our group. Very cool. Um, so I really enjoyed that. I got to hear so many career stories, and one thing I'd recommend is if you ever have the chance to listen to someone's life story, take it, mm -hmm. because chances are that the person you're speaking to has gone through an obstacle that you're going to face down the road without knowing it, or that person is doing something really cool that you're interested in. So I feel like having a pioneer to kind of look to, not to necessarily emulate, but to just look at them and be inspired by them is very important because you can learn vicariously through them and it will set you up for success. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things I really enjoyed was working through the work study booklet, which we'll talk about yeah. in a bit. Um, it was a little booklet that all work study students get, and it has space for you to reflect on the things you're learning through the work study program, a little space for you to set goals. And as someone who just loves introspection and loves to reflect on myself, I feel like it really gave me the opportunity to assess where I was at a certain moment, um, to think, okay, is this aligned with my goals? And then to ask my supervisor if she could create um, opportunities for me that were maybe more aligned with my goals. So for example, I was a project coordinator, but I wanted to do something in the future that would inspire people. So I knew that that would mean going in front of an audience one day, which is something that formerly scared me a lot. It still scares me a little bit. Um, so I asked her if she could give me as many opportunities as possible to just do things like public speaking, and she created those opportunities for me, and it was great. So I literally got to see my dreams being turned into reality, and it was, it was kind of cool. So that's what I enjoyed about my work study experience. That's so great. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, yeah, a big part of it is exactly what Jasan's saying, is um, becoming future ready. So you get great opportunity, you get some on-campus work, develop some skills, get paid, which is nice, really nice, um, but it also makes you future ready. There's an uh, important uh, priority through the work-study program around professional development, and so U of T actually pays for two hours of training for all work-study students, and there are loads of way like workshops, things you can go to, but we also really encourage you to do that workbook. Um, it basically facilitates that reflection and learning process throughout your work study term, and then at the end of it, it can help you articulate the things that you've learned specifically, which can be critical when it comes time to update your resume, right? Um, so we really encourage you guys, if you do work study, to think about that. In 2018, uh, a quick statistic, students who completed the workbook were 26% more likely to strongly agree that they, their work study pr position provided them with meaningful experience and that they had a better idea of the kind of career that they wanted to pursue or education that they wanted to pursue in the future. So um, the workbook, if you do it, can really shape your experience as well. But the work study program, no matter what, awesome, awesome opportunity. Um, the applications are going live in early August through the CLNX. So around that time, I encourage you to log in and check out what's on there, what's happening. And we'll be promoting it like crazy on all U of T Student Life uh, social channels. Yes, 
you'll see it everywhere. We're promoting yeah. work study everywhere. It's such a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if you're interested in learning about the opportunities that were that are going to become available at the beginning of August, um, just go to the CLNX website. We should have a link posted in the comments. And just look at all of the opportunities that are available. I already mentioned some of them. Research, working with kids, mm -hmm. all of that nice stuff. Um, but there are more opportunities there that I could even explain. Yeah. So just jump on and you're going to find something for sure that's aligned with your interests. Yeah, absolutely. It's nice because in the classroom you're studying all the academic things that make you tick and then outside of the classroom you can learn about the different skills or the different types of work that will allow you to thrive after, uh, after university as well. So it's great. Um, we also on CLNX, in addition to the work study job board, we have a central job board. So it's full of uh, more than 16,000 employers looking to hire U of T students. I know, <laughs> I can't even wrap my head around that number, it's so big. Yeah. Um, so there's hundreds of new jobs added every day. They're looking for U of T students. It's a great way to even just see what's out there right now, even if you're not ready to start applying. But if you are, definitely check that out for sure. So again, that's CLNX, clnx.utoronto.ca. It's very likely in the comments by now. Yep. It is for sure. It is. So I won't <laughs> dwell on that. Yeah, and, and as Carrie said, it's just <laughs> wonderful to see all of the opportunities in your community and the ways that you can contribute no matter where you are. Yeah. Um, so before we head over to questions, which we're going to do in just a moment, um, I want to end by saying something that I think it's important for everyone to hear. Um, just know that you'll probably encounter the fear of missing out at some point in your student journey or in your professional journey. It's nothing to fear. Um, you're going to have a period of time where you might doubt your ability to contribute to the world, to the society. Um, you might uh, doubt your ability to achieve your grandest goals. You might even think, uh, you know, am I really cut out for this? Am I really cut out for university or your professional goals, whatever they are? Mm -hmm. But remember, while it's, learn while it's good to learn from others' experiences and, and to have role models, it's never helpful for you to compare yourself to other people. You are a True. unique and wonderful individual. Um, each of us has a unique journey that only we can use to fulfill a certain role. So in keeping with my role as a career FOMO ambassador, I encourage you today to banish the fear of missing out and begin to think, how can I create a future of my own? Um, be active in your positive thoughts this summer. Let dreams for your future replace your present fear, okay? And remember that there are always people here who can help you, okay? So cool. Let's move on to your questions now. Yes. That was so yeah. inspiring. That, that was, was so cool. great. Right. Yes, yes. I'm I inspired. Have chills. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, let's see. There was um, some questions I have come in already. Yes, yeah. I, can, I can we can start with the Instagram questions sure. that came yeah. in. Yeah. So um, one is the first one we got was how to how to apply for jobs without previous experience. Mm. Do you wanna start? Sure, yeah. yes. Because when I applied for um, when I applied for my first job, so I'll talk a little bit about my uh, CX ed or my work study position. I didn't have too much experience other than volunteering. Mm -hmm. I would say if you're applying without any experience, uh, really speak to anything that you've done, even in the classroom, that aligns with your position. So, for example, um, I presented a seminar in one of my first year courses, and so I was able to talk a little bit about my ability to present in front of a group my ability to do research, and I found that those skills were transferable for the job, the work-study position that I was looking for. So even if you're someone who's just coming out of high school, or even if you're um, you know, almost done your university degree and you're not really sure if you have the experience that it takes, you should still apply yeah. and just be strategic in the way you, you talk about your experience and never underestimate any experience that you have, even if it's just in the classroom or an extracurricular experience. Exactly, and that's what I was going to say, is that a lot of those skills or are, are experiences are transferable. So you, maybe you don't have formal work experience, but you've been doing class presentations, group work, co-curricular activities, volunteering, all teamwork kind of stuff. All of that counts. All of that is relevant and important to, to not undersell. We have a workshop in career exploration and education called Know Yourself. You can register for that on the CLNX events and workshops calendar um, later on in the summer, possibly early September. Um, and that can help you think these things through as well. I encourage you to check that out. Great, thank yeah. you. Uh, the next question, would university help me if I want to have my own startup? Hmm. 
Um, yes, I would absolutely say for sure. We have a number of entrepreneurial type of supports here in the university. One thing we do is um, entrepreneur, entrepreneur Week. That's a hard word to say. Entrepreneur Week. Um, and that is uh, 60 plus um, professionals come in. You can learn about different types of innovations that are currently being worked on. You can get connected to entrepreneurs currently or other students like yourself who are interested in, um, in entrepreneurial activities. Um, there's uh, on ramp, on ramp, which is a space here at U of T uh, that is for makers. There's students who participate or use that space, and also um, um, community professionals, entrepreneurs in the community who use that space as well. I think one of the key things about um, your experience at uni university is that it connects you to a network of people. So students like yourself who are entrepreneurially minded or um, alumni or um, like I said 10,000 Coffees is an online database of alumni um, and they're doing lots of fascinating things and just reaching out to those folks, asking them questions, talking to them can lead to support down the road for you as well. Yeah, yeah agreed. I think that um, especially the networking can really help you. Um, I don't know much about this program. Maybe mm -hmm. you might know a bit more about mm -hmm. it, but there's the hatchery. That's yeah. another kind of, a, it helps students who might have ideas that they want to turn into startups. Mm -hmm. So I feel just um, kind of echoing Carrie's words here, mm -hmm. um, being in university kind of gives you a strong foundation or a network that you can grow from. I know of a lot of startups that have started at universities or where the ideas were conceived at university just because of the volume of knowledge that you're able to gain from your classes and everything. Mm -hmm. And you might even find a professor who's interested in something you're doing. So wow. definitely think it's a beneficial experience. Mm -hmm. Definitely. That's linking to their Facebook page, The Hatchery. Oh, great. UFC Hatchery. So Hatchery is now yeah. in the comments it's if you want to check comments. that out. Mm -hmm. Yes. OK, how do I book an appointment with the career counselor? Great. Do you want to take that one? Maybe you can take I can take it. Yeah. So, um, so, to book, so uh, yeah, we have a number of career educators that can help you navigate um, the career services here at U of G and to navigate what your own future path might look like. Um, to book an appointment, we usually recommend that you start with a career start appointment. Um, so uh, those, are, again, are 20-minute uh, short appointments that with uh, a peer who can help you navigate all the different services, all the different workshops, all the different things that we have to create a personalized plan for yourself. But to book an appointment with a career educator, there are drop-in appointments, um, I believe on Fridays, um, or you can reach out for an appointment through the front desk. You can do that by phone or in person or through the career chat um, service that we have through CLNX. Um, so Josanne was talking about that earlier. I think those are in the comments. Um, they are. Those yes. are in the comments. So you can reach out through the front desk. Great. Cool. Um, okay, so from Bo, any advice for someone who's in a field where it can be a little challenging to find a first job based on their program? Mm -hmm. Someone who's interested in a field, maybe. Mm -hmm. This person says they're from the arts. From the, the arts. arts. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Cool. cool. Um, well, maybe I could speak to that a little yeah. bit. Um, yes, because I'm definitely in a similar position. It's hard to find that first job in my field. Um, I would recommend maybe doing some research about jobs that are related to the field that you're interested in. So if you're in a field that doesn't necessarily have a, a clearly defined staircase where it's like first you do this, then you do this, then you do this, um, maybe just look for a job that is related to it and see if that job will enable you to gain skills that will give you the mobility to move up to future jobs that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. um, and that knowledge can come through networking with people who are in your field. So as Carrie mentioned, 10,000 copies is great. Yeah. Um, there's LinkedIn as well, which is really helpful. And there's no need to be afraid of LinkedIn as a student. Honestly, it's easy. I joined this summer. Um, and it gives you access to a wonderful network. And then um, UFT has a lot of networking sessions as well. You'll see posters around campus. So networking is definitely a good first step. Uh, just generally doing research, uh, reading articles can help you to source that first um, job for you. And then when it comes time to apply, just 
come on in to CXI to the Career Exploration yeah. Education Center, and we'll help you to get your resume and cover letter ready so that it's uh, it's fine tuned and as good as it can be. Yeah. I mean, and I think it's important to think about um, all the things that make you unique. So um, you'll have an arts degree. A lot of people will have an arts degree. So what kind of volunteer experience are you doing? Or what kind of um, like on-campus opportunities, maybe through um, clubs, for example, like all of that creates a relevant experience that can help promote yourself to the job opportunities that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. So yeah, thank you. Okay, from Wilsey. Hi, I'm a psychology and neuroscience double major. Psychology. Happy face, mm. smiley face. <laughs> um, thank you for all the helpful tips so far. I was wondering if there's anything for me in the job shadowing program in these fields specifically. So neuroscience and psychology. A hundred percent. Yes, I love the job shadow program very much. Um, we have hosts and professionals from all walks of the industry, all sorts of different industries and professions. So um, for Wilsey, we have, thank you for your question, we have um, a, a clinical and counseling psychologist um, in the job shadow program. Um, really great learning opportunity. And we also have uh, an art therapist as well, which is kind of a different take on a similar field. Um, but our hosts change all the time. Um, we're currently in the recruitment phase to get new people in. Um, so if you have something you're interested in, you can always email me and I can see about adding that to our list. I can't guarantee anything, but I can certainly uh, see what I can do to recruit people that, uh, that you might be interested in. Um, and my email is career exploration at utoronto.ca. Um, yeah, we have loads of interesting people and I encourage you to check it out. Great, just writing your email. Oh, thank in you. In the comments. <laughs> okay, thank you. Great answers. Grusha wants to know, what advice would you give students who are in their last year of university and maybe worried about what kind of job they'll find themselves in after graduating? What steps should they take now that will help them come April? Oh, interesting. So, concern about what kind of job they'll get when they graduate. Mm. Great. And what steps should they take now? This. Good job. <laughs> I think um, learning about the services that are available to you through career exploration and education are key. Um, depending on what your major is as well or what department you're from, there might be career services as well for you through your home department. Um, do you have any initial ideas? I think so. Um, so going into your last year can on its own just be a very stressful experience. Mm -hmm. So I think it's good, as Carrie said, that you're pursuing this information by even tuning into this session. So good job for you. Yeah. Um, you might want to just think about things that, that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's always a good first step. Um, and then just have a look at some of the jobs that you might be interested in down the road. So you might not know the job that you're going to be entering in after you graduate. I think that's something that we can't always control, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But if you have an idea of the job that you might like to have further on down the road, then you might want to uh, connect with people who can help you to gain some of those skills. Um, networking is crucial, I think, and I keep yeah. talking about it because people can actually give you access to jobs that you might not find just through uh, recruiting websites and mm -hmm. things like that. So come April, if you even just find the right person, you might have a job or at least some kind of opportunity that makes you feel fulfilled and happy and um, ready to go on and maybe achieve some of those career goals that you have. Um, but in the meantime, in terms of skill development, um, I don't know, I might recommend maybe volunteering somewhere yeah. that's aligned with a, a path that you want to take, um, or maybe finding uh, some kind of internship that you could do. It doesn't have yeah. to be a big internship. I think that any experience is really wonderful. The internship that I'm doing right now is actually unpaid, but it's helping me to develop all of the skills that I like. So mm -hmm. um, if you're able to find one, even at another university, it could even help you, and then you could always do that while you're going to school, and then come April, you'll have a lot of skills that you can speak to when it comes to applying for a job. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I mentioned it earlier too, the job shadow program is a great way to, uh, to connect with, like we facilitate that connection for you, right? So you, um, I, will, I can connect you with professionals in the workplace um, and you can go and you can talk to them and think about is this something that I want to do? Um, we also have in the field, which can get you into different organizations, like I said, Deloitte or Google, depending on what you're interested in. Um, it sounds like you're in the point of career exploration, which is a very exciting but ambiguous place to be in, but that's completely what our services are here to help you 
to help you do. So um, a lot of our uh, services are on the Student Life website or on clnx.utoronto.ca. Um, and I encourage you just to milk it, like check all of them out. Um, also, you are eligible for career exploration and education um, services for up to two years after you convocate, after the date of your convocation. So you can continue to access these supports even after April next year. Great, thank you. Um, work study positions are another way to gain experience. So oh yes, thanks for saying. Question, just yeah. when do we apply for those work study positions? Yeah, you know, I don't have the exact date. I think it's August 7th. Yes. Uh, August it is 7th. for sure August 7th. Great. Yeah. <laughs> I just want to be sure. All right, so it's August 7th. All the postings for work study are going to go live. So you can go onto the CLNX database again to see those, again, in the comments. Um, and yeah, there are positions all across the university. Uh, to go back to Grisha's question, that's a great way to start getting experience, getting connected to people, building your references. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, building those references for yeah. sure. August 7th. Um, what's an example of a job I could get? Someone asked from Instagram for work study. Great question. Yeah. Yeah, I can, um, I can definitely speak to that a little bit. Um, one of the jobs that I saw um, when I was applying for a work study position was a position of an AV, I think it was an AV assistant. So if you're interested in audio visuals um, or even something that's a little bit more art space, um, they have plenty of those on there. And they even have opportunities to contribute to a community organization. Um, I think that the St. Charles Student Housing Building has a lot of work study positions. It's off campus, but you get the opportunity to work with kids, kind of like a, a year-round summer camp coordinator, which is kind that's of cool. cool. Yeah. That's one of my dream jobs. So if you're interested in those kinds of things and anything else, even engineering, research, all of those are there for you on um, the CLNX. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are research opportunities if research is your game. I did a program facilitation or workshop facilitation. Um, yeah, loads of different opportunities. Kind of run the gambit. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I encourage you just to check in and like scroll through on August 7th to look at all the different opportunities. Yes, it's really fun to scroll through actually. Like to imagine that all of these different roles exist just on one campus. It's almost like having a mini workopolis site just oh, yeah. on that. It's pretty cool. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a question just came in from Shrira asking, is the work study program open for incoming grad students as well? Incoming grad students, yeah. Yeah, all, yeah, all students, 100%. Woohoo, mm -hmm. cool, yay. <laughs> uh, and finally, this will be, I think, our last question. Um, how do I get experience for my resume while going to school at U of T? I think we covered this like yeah. Yeah, there's but loads of ways. Yeah, yeah, there's loads of ways to get experience. Um, I'd encourage you not to just think about like your work experience, but as we were saying, what are the ways you're volunteering? What kind of clubs are you joining? Mm -hmm. Those interpersonal skills are critical. Those soft skills are critical yeah. for a lot of organizations, most organizations now. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And um, even things that you might be doing on your own, like yeah. passion projects. I have at least two friends who have started their own blogs. Um, mm. So if you're interested in doing something that's a little bit more self-made, and you might not think, well, does this really qualify as an experience? Of course it does. For sure. Anything that's setting you up for the professional world or anything that is showcasing your abilities and talents is something that you should be proud of. Mm -hmm. So if you have an interest, for example, in uh, the arts, I, I feel like a few of you had an interest uh, in doing visual art kind of things, you could maybe uh, start an Etsy page and sell things there, and you could do that during the school year and get some experience, or you could start a blog, or you could do a work study position, or you could join a club, um, and yeah, all of those things are wonderful ways to gain experience. You don't have to uh, uh, jump through any hoops or anything. You're all wonderful individuals. So just do something uh, that really showcases your abilities. Yeah, and the work study program yeah. is great. It's yeah. very great. You can come work with us at CLN or at, oh, at Career Exploration and yeah. Education. <laughs> come work with us um, or work anywhere across the university. Mm -hmm. I think that might be it for yeah, the questions. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. Well, cool. thank you all so much. This was wonderful. Again, if you have further questions and you want to reach out to me, my email account is in the comments. Um, yeah, final thoughts? I guess that's it. Just um, all of you, enjoy your summer, stay awesome, and remember that no matter what comes up during the school year, you can face it. There are people here to help you. Um, so don't really pay attention to you of tears. Just make it, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. make it a future of your own and 
just stay resilient. Yes, amazing. Thank you. Bye.